So as expected, people started telling me that I was doing the heart rate formula all wrong. So let's go ahead and update this for a second and make sure that you guys know that there is a better way than just 220 minus your age. How's it going runners? My name is Justin Thompson. I'm your average running PT and I help the average runner achieve their own personal elite status. If that's something you guys are into, then go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you guys know when the next video comes out. You might have noticed I've changed my location for today, and that's just because my wife is spending a lot of time in her home office today. She was working from home, and I'm trying to get these videos out on a semi-regular basis, so I figured I'd just throw one together while sitting out here. Um, tell me whether you guys like this environment a little bit better than the other one. And forgive me if there's a little bit of extra noise around. I can't really control the environment out here, so... And there was, just a few minutes ago, a possum walking right back in there. Um, that was kind of wild, but interesting, I guess. So I made the disclosures in the video last time whenever we talked about Zone 2 versus Math, okay? So I'm going to link to this video here so that you guys know what I'm talking about. And I do think that that is still a very beneficial video to watch, so I do talk about a few other things in there as well. So make sure that you guys check that one out. But before you do that, I want to make sure that I'm very clear here that I made sure that I said in that video that 220 minus your age is not the most accurate way of figuring out your heart rate zones. So what I wanted to do today, and this was my intention all along, was to use the Carvonin method, or your heart rate reserve method, in order to figure out a slightly more accurate version of your heart rate zones. And what makes it more accurate is because it's taking into account your resting heart rate. And in general, if you have a lower resting heart rate, it tends to indicate that you are more physically fit or you have a better aerobic capacity. Now, of course, this still is not the most accurate way of figuring things out. However, it is more accurate than just doing 220 minus your age. Now it still takes kind of an arbitrary number where it subtracts 220 minus your age, but then it uses your heart rate reserve as the, the next kind of indicator for what you need to do to figure out and calculate your heart rate zones. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to pull up a calculator online and what this calculator is going to do is it's actually going to calculate our heart rate reserve for us and give us our zones for us because there is a little bit of math involved and you know if it's me I'm just going to plug them into a calculator if that's available to me. So I'm going to put this link to this calculator in the description below so make sure that if you want to use this method plug your numbers in and then you can do this okay so here we go I'm gonna zoom in on this just a little bit so that you guys can see kind of what it is that we're even looking at so it takes a couple things into account number one it takes your age into account again this is kind of like you know age is not a great number for figuring out your maximum heart rate but it's a place to start so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and type in my age here 32 and then I'm going to enter my resting heart rate. Now when you figure out your resting heart rate, what you have to do is you have to take it when you first wake up in the morning, okay? So as soon as that alarm goes off and you sit up in bed and before your feet ever even hit the ground, that's when you're taking your heart rate measurement. Now I've done this over the past few days and on average I'm running at about 48 beats per minute as my resting heart rate. So I'm putting that into the calculator and then all you have to do is take those two numbers, click calculate, and now we've got, it's going to tell us what our estimated maximum heart rate is. Again, that's just based on your age, that's 220 minus 32 and it gives me 188. Now it's using an old method of uh, figuring target heart rate zones um, here and so I'm not even going to look at that. What I want to look at is the Carbonin formula or the heart rate reserve method. So this is what we're talking about here. And so what I want to do, I want to go ahead and just kind of 
flesh out what these numbers are, right? So zone one would be 50 to 60%. So my heart rate reserve zone one would be 118 to 132. Now, if you guys remember from my zone two versus math video that we talked about this last time, that's pretty equivalent to my zone two from just the 220 minus your age method of figuring it out. So that's why, you know, it felt so difficult for me to maintain zone two because according to the Carvonen formula, I was actually in zone one. All right, so if we go to the next level, 60 to 70 percent, now we're getting into zone two. So if we're looking at my zone two, we're looking more at like 132 beats per minute for 60 percent and 146 beats per minute for 70 percent. And this looks a little bit more like my math zone, my math range, which is, which again, if you guys forgot, my math range is 138 to 148. So this is looking very much like my math range, right? So if you want to be a little bit more accurate with your zone two calculation, don't just take 220 minus your age. It is a method that people use, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. But for but for a little bit more accuracy and actually using um, your your heart rate reserve, or and, and that's a little bit of a better indication of your fitness, I would go with using the Carbonin method. Now, of course, there are still more accurate ways of doing this, but they get a little bit harder to calculate, a little bit more expensive if you end up doing it, getting it actually tested. Um, I might go over those here in the future. Um, there's your lactate threshold that you can use as another method of doing this. But for right now, this to me is a really good way of honing in on what is zone two, right? So if you are, so basically if I am, you know, trying to achieve math zone or zone two, you know, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. So I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at zone two, I'm trying to keep it under 146. If I'm looking at math, I'm trying to keep it under 148 not a huge difference there and from day to day it may vary uh, you know whether I can kind of keep it at one level or another so again this is a really great way to try and figure out your zones that's a little bit more accurate than 220 minus your age I hope that that was helpful for you guys I wanted to come on and just kind of give you this update to zone two versus math okay i wanted to make sure that we were really clear on the fact that there is another way to do this and it is a little bit more accurate and i promise i wasn't just trying to lead you guys astray by saying that method but i just wanted to put it out there because it is a method that people use whether it's accurate or not so and to show you that you can even go lower in their in your heart rate zones uh, if you want to so so again, this was just an update to my previous video. Again, go back and watch that previous video because it talks a lot more about some other things in there such as how I'm actually progressing and that will give you guys a little bit more of an idea about how you should be progressing if you're kind of starting from the bottom and working your way up. Again, I hope that that was helpful. If you guys liked it, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now head on out there, seek your elite. God bless and I'll see you next time.